All right. We'll call the meeting to order of the regular board meeting of trustees in Napa Valley College at 433. Roll call, please. Trustee Baker. Here. Trustee Martinson. Here. Trustee Baldini. Here. Trustee Segura. Here. Trustee Rios. Here. Student Trustee Kawaja. Here. Trustee Iverson. Here. And uh, Trustee Mancuso. Here. Thank you. Uh. All right, we will be uh, heading into closed session, but first public comment for closed session. Following any public comment uh, regarding closed session, the board will go immediately into closed session to consider or take any action upon uh, closed session items. And I believe that we have a couple of comments here. Mark Craddy and Jan Shart. Mark. Good evening. It's been a while. Um, as you can see, you've got a lot of classified here. Pretty good group. They're the underpinning. They're the people that get the job done so that everybody else, the faculty and all the rest can get the job done. Do you want to retain the best and most productive workers? You call us a team, an effective unit. For the most part, we are. The class five professionals, these group here, these limited men here, they're the ones, they care about it. They put in the time, they work hard. They're the reasons we got the students. They're the best that can be built on. Without the classified, the labs and the classrooms are not ready. Without the classified, no students are enrolled. The college might as well stop. The same is true of the faculty. If the faculty does not impart their knowledge in the class or have the classroom and labs ready, they can't, they can't teach. So we might as well close the doors. You spent $60,000 or more on a class and comp study. Now it's time to get this thing done. It's going to be hard to do this thing, but it's got to be implemented. We have to implement it. In order to retain the best, we have to do this. You don't, we've been training people and after a few years, they leave. The bulk of these folks in here have been here for quite a few years. But if we're going to retain them, we have to pay them. We gotta draw the best. We can't hire them. How many hiring committees are going out where people aren't showing up and we're not getting the qualified people to do the job? We have to do something about that. You hire the best, you're gonna have to pay them to live here. Not commute. A 20 minute commute in the morning takes an hour or more. And some of you may make the same commute. It's, it's terrible. We have to be able to be, live here. We have to have a wage that our people can live on. So let us work together, find a solution. Let us not be as Kipling stated, all people like us are we, everyone else is they. Instead, the we and they need to become us. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good evening. Um, I want to give you the definition of equity. The quality of being fair and impartial. The value of shares e issued by a company. Equity, one, in our case, there's one group on campus who is receiving 5% for the longevity steps for 10 and 15 years. Classified staff are receiving 2.5%. This shows what we're suffering as an equity. And for some of us who have been here since the dinosaurs roam the earth, um, as I feel some days, it's, it shows that how un, unjust it is. And we would like to see us treated as equal as to the other employee groups. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there any other public comment at this time? All right, we will close public comment and the Board of Trustees will go into a closed session. We will be 4.1, we will have conference with labor negotiators and 4.2 public employee evaluation adjourned to closed session. We'll return back to public session. Going on, yes. And uh, closed session, we have nothing to report out. So if you will please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, we now go to 5.3, adoption of agenda, and I've been made aware that we have a couple of things to pull. We're going to pull uh, item 11.5, the American medical response. Uh, there is some preparation on that contract that still needs to be uh, done. And then also on 10.1, the board policies 3410, 3420, and 3430 uh, will also be postponed due to APs that also need to go through the process and bring them back together. Aside from that, is there anything else in the board agenda? <clears throat> Needs change, update at it. All right, seeing none, agenda adopted. Six point one public comment public comment and guidelines at this time the board will devote a total of up to 15 minutes for comments to the Board of Trustees regarding any subject not appearing as an agenda item for this meeting but over which the board has jurisdiction the public may ask the board to place an item related to the business of the district on a future board agenda no action or discussion will occur at this time on such items, individuals will be limited to five minute presentation. And at this time, the board chair will pull those in attendance regarding uh, their intention to speak on any item on the agenda. I have uh, Gary Orton, Mr. Orton. <clears throat> um, hey, Gary, if this is, is this, would this be, I just want to clarify so we're not, that we don't end up, is this going to be on the subcommittee's report later tonight? Or do you, is this just general enough where you think it could happen now? I'd like to address it now. Okay. I, I, mean, okay? I tell you one of the reasons it's so late on the agenda, it, it I think some of the, the staff should hear this too. Yeah. All right, that's up to you. Then I, think, <clears throat> I think it's fine from my vantage point. Okay. So even though it's on the agenda later in the item, we're going to go ahead and hear, so. go ahead and hear the uh, comments at this time. Yeah, because you really can't tell from the agenda. Exactly. It just says reports. I don't know if there's going to be a report made or not. Right. <laughs> Madam Chair, Honorable Trustees, <clears throat> my name is Gary Orton. I live in Napa. I am a big fan of career technical education and know its importance in our economic well-being. My father was a technical educator with United Airlines for 40 years first as an instructor and eventually as an award-winning writer, director, and producer of industrial motion pictures. He got into the field in an unusual way. After graduating from high school, he attended and almost finished a program for aviation mechanics at the Boeing School of Aeronautics located at the Oakland Airport. He was surprised when he approached the school on the Monday morning after the attack on Pearl Harbor to find it guarded by military police. Planners in the War Department had, obviously, determined long before which, which occupational skills would be a vital necessity and in high demand. He was quickly, quickly graduated and added to, to a rapidly growing staff of instructors teaching military aviation mechanics. The point of the story is that planning is essential to determine which types of technical education courses will be in high demand under different circumstances. This type of planning has become much more sophisticated over the years. A PowerPoint presentation posted some months ago on the college website gives an overview of the college and proclaims as a possibility a, quote, wine train, depot, and manufacturing tech, 
Quo's cloak facility to be located in the undeveloped area on the main campus and lists as potential courses machining, welding, engineering graphics, railroad engineering, plus hospitality slash events. It has never been explained why or how the wine train would be involved in delivering these courses. Most are already taught by our, our talented staff. This board has never discussed the need to privatize or even semi-privatize our career technical education. Last week, a new draft web page entitled District and Campus Master Plan was introduced at the board's Real Property Committee. The draft web page lists several so-called featured projects, including a wine train technology center. It now has a name. Trustee Baldini, chair of the committee, generously shared that he had taken a tour of the rail program at Johnson County Community College located in Overland Park, Kansas, near Kansas City. He did not provide much detail about what he learned. We do know the National Academy of Railroad Sciences located there is described as a, quote, partnership with the college and BNSF Railway. When I delved into it, I found most of the major railroads in the Midwest are well represented on the program's advisory committee, which is some evidence of a demand for entry-level railroad employees in that region. The course offerings in railroad operation and maintenance seemed quite varied. At the meeting, I asked what need for courses in railroad technology have been shown to exist in our region. I assumed that this need would have been studied before announcing this wine train program to the public. The only answer I received was that the educational master plan recognized the need to form enhanced associations and collaborations with local businesses and industry. That answer fails to acknowledge that the decision to add or change career technical education courses requires first and foremost labor market information analysis to ensure that the need for the program is supported by data for the service area of the college district. Formation of alliances and collaboration enhance, but do not control the decision-making process. Advisory committees, not formal risk-sharing partnerships, are formed and mainly consist of representatives of industries knowledgeable about the demand for particular occupations and who need a steady supply of entry-level workers. I reviewed many labor market reports and studies relied on by the college's Career Education and Workplace Development Division, saw that it actively participates in the Regional Bay Area Community College Occupational Educators Consortium, and looked at the robust advisory, I, and I also looked at the robust advisory committee structure the division has created. In my opinion, under De Dean Chabadi's capable leadership, we have excellent planners who constantly monitor labor market demands in our region, coordinate with other community colleges to avoid duplication, and collaborate with local employers, all of which is required by law and accreditation standards biannually for each existing program and before any new vocational or occupational course is approved. Napa Valley College's career and technical courses have won many awards for their demonstrated effectiveness because of the alignment of curriculum with employment demand. In other words, they have gotten it right. Our students, employers, and economy are well served by this process and college staff. My request tonight is simple. Before posting a web page listing, quote, wine train technology center, close quote, as a new featured project, and before issuing any more press releases about a pending partnership with the wine train, please let the public know that our talented career education division has determined from real facts and figures about the need for any new vocational courses proposed by the wine train. Thank you. Next, Bruce Ketron. Hi, I'm Trustee Emeritus Bruce Ketron, and I'm Regret to inform you that um, Trustee uh, Meredith Joanne Busenbark will not be joining us tonight. That was humor. <laughs> I did talk to Joanne. Um, Abraham Lincoln is quoted as saying, I care not for a man's religion whose dog or cat are not the better for it. Please let me apply this to a college trustees. I care not for a college trustees, religion or politics whose students are not the better for it. If a trustee brings a casserole to a college fire shelter, then those at the shelter are the better for it. So yes, there is a rare time and place for individual trustee acts. This board had extensive discussions in April when I was present, and other times covering materials given in the training 
of board members as to governance. The first point is always that the board acts as a whole. Board governance describes the processes associated with oversight, strategic planning, evaluation, and establishing accountability within the organization. From a legal perspective, the U.S. Supreme Court in Stern versus Lucy Webb Hayes National Training School ruled that nonprofit boards of directors hold three important responsibilities, the duty of care, the duty of loyalty, and the duty of obedience. The duty of care requires that individuals act in good faith for the best interests of the board. Duty of loyalty requires board members to avoid conflicts of interest and advance the organization's interests. The duty of obedience requires board members to observe the organization's missions, policies, and bylaws. Boards also have important fiduciary responsibilities to serve as good stewards of the financial resources and assets of the organization. Board members should ensure these resources are utilized as a reasonable, appropriate, and, and accountable manner, and I would add, so that our students are the better for it. It is not clear that our community heard that as the dominant message in this election. Instead, this election reminded me of the many references that Michael and I heard about Napa Valley College problem board member when we were beginning trustees. Ernest Ernie DeMuth's one term ended eight years before our terms. However, it was discussed quite often, and it was clear that the disgrace of this board member brought disgrace upon the whole board. That is the impact of disgrace. It taints others. Ernie had his own issues, and he was passionate to the point of not obeying the organization's missions, policies, and bylaws. By law, co-trustees have a duty, quote, to take reasonable steps to prevent a co-trustee from committing a breach of trust or to compel a trustee to redress a breach of trust. It's probate code section 16013, subsection B. Uh, is perhaps more than a, it is perhaps more than a historical footnote that Ernie's opponent received others' trustees' endorsements. It is my hope that never in the future will trustees have to band together against a person. Since Ernie was not the only trustee whose legacy is disgrace, it is essential for the board to have special meetings to review the required materials on the limits and boundaries that apply to trustees. It is likely that the election will bring a change to the board. The change of even a single trustee means there is a new board. Matters are now for the new board next month. This caretaker meeting and the focus is on the transition to the new board. And to the elephant in the room, it is now noted and is my sincere hope that the new board will take the strongest possible action so that college staff will be relieved of what has become an unacceptable burden of making board presentations according to the unpredictable caprice of any trustee. Perhaps it is best to have trustees present their questions and concerns in advance of meetings to allow proper responses or to postpone matters for responses to a later meeting to end this trustee cause problem. I would ask that all trustee questions and actions meet the test that are the students are, our students are the better for it. Thank you. Okay, we go on to constituent group reports. Uh, 7.1, academic, academic Senate report. <laughs> Amanda. Thank you, good evening board. Um, I wanted to give you a, a little summary of what I have been up to of late. I have uh, had the opportunity to travel off campus for uh, two conferences in consecutive weekends. One was the Leading from the Middle, which is uh, an academy sponsored by the Research Planning Group of the state. And I have had the pleasure of convening with colleagues, uh, Michael John Vecchio, Dean Diana Shabodi, uh, uh, Robin Warnall, and Jessica Erickson, and we have through uh, these convenings, the last one being this most recent, have um, worked with 
colleagues across the state in developing tools for bringing the conversation around guided pathways to our campus. And I would like to say that the college was highlighted for our progress at the convening, at what we have been doing locally in terms of what we call making the case to our colleagues and to staff around guided pathways, uh, notably our Flex Day activity where we looked at data and these uh, monthly brown bag gatherings where we are looking at data points and beginning a discussion about how to figure out who our students are and how they use the institution. There is more to come on that topic. Um, the other meeting I have recently attended is the plenary session at the State Academic Senate. And it was a lively couple of days with a surprise visit from the chancellor, brief though it was, and much discussion, much debate, much back and forth around many of the initiatives or actually mandates now coming from the chancellor's office, specifically around the 100% um, <clears throat> uh, online so-called 115th Community College, the State Senate's uh, position being, uh, now that it is uh, coming into existence, that it have a, an academic senate, as every community college in the state must, and that that academic senate be faculty. And other resolutions uh, around and related to the implementation of AB 705, and finally, a rather pointed resolution uh, directed at the current chancellor regarding perceived and uh, real lack of uh, collegial consultation with faculty and other constituent groups at the state level. So it was lively, but we actually got done early too, so that was, that was great. And so uh, Senate continues to work very hard. We've got a slew of policies and uh, excuse me, administrative procedures uh, going through the process. We are also working on our revising our full-time faculty hiring process and also teaching. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Administrative Confidential Senate Report, Robert Harris. Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, well, since the last meeting, we, the, the group really has nothing specific um, other than to report that um, we have been working uh, with a subgroup via mutual gains with campus administration to uh, work to increase the morale and the understanding uh, of the administrative confidential group uh, relative to the recently completed class and comp study as it was specific, part of it was specific to the, our group, the admin confidential. So it's an ongoing process and uh, we have established a, a meeting schedule we're working with in um, the president's schedule to, to continue just talking about where we are and where we wanna be. Uh, and then on a, a lighter note, so to speak, it's not really a downer note, but the light was on, on October 19th, we uh, had a, a social at the winery, which was, uh, at the, uh, we received some regrets from, from some of uh, the, the campus, but uh, we had 14 people or 15 people appeared, which is over 30, it's over a third of our group. So it was a nice set Friday afternoon where um, uh, you put your, put your hair down and have a good time. So we're working, as I said in my report that Maria Villagomez said last time, we're trying to work to get some, codify some things that have sort of been uh, understandings or handshakes, just so we have a roadmap of where, of where we want to go. So we set precedent and we have a, we have a historical record of, of where we've been and what we want to do. So thank you. Thank you, but was anybody else invited to this winery social? Uh, yeah, I think so. how'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. All right, um, Associate Students of Napa Valley College Report, Rafael Monzo. Thank you, good evening. Um, well, uh, it's actually been quite a busy October for us. I, I think I'm kind of looking back at all the, all the things that we'd uh, undertaken and I, so I guess I'll start with um, the legislators' breakfast. Um, it wasn't just me this year that attended. Um, several of my teammates really expressed an interest um, and 
accepted the invitation. They really wanted to go and they really, really liked it. Um, and I, I knew they would because last year it was really special. And again, this year just didn't disappoint, um, particularly the speakers. I mean, they're just so articulate in what's going on now. Like the ever-changing things that are happening in education and K through 12 and um, you know Napa County and, and 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 beyond. So it's just really well done. A really well done event. Um, I really enjoyed it again, and my team just thought so much of it. So um, yeah, I and, and we're so grateful for the opportunity and that invite. Um, so uh, we so we started kind of there in October. Also, um, I was invited uh, to a, partake in the um, Chito Chito uh, Institute um, that we host here on campus. It stands for Chicanex Institute for Teaching and Organizing. Um, it's a two day institute that we host. We've been hosting here on campus um, for several years now, and um, I'd, I'd heard about it. I've heard about it all these years, but I never actually. Um, been invited or found a way to go there, but that's because it's really a professional development uh, thing for some of our staff who offer services to students and uh, some of our faculty, you know, educators. So, you know, I just kind of had to find my way as a student rep to like get invited, and I did uh, because I serve on our uh, Napa Valley College Equity and Inclusivity Committee, and so um, as one of the student representatives there. So um, that's basically how I got in, and I had a great time. Um, I really think that the uh, what they teach, all the pedagogy about decolonizing uh, knowledge and the classroom, and um, just really innovative ways. Um, Again, so again, with the theme of like how education is changing um, and ethnic studies um, being so much uh, in flux over the last decade um, in Arizona, but then in, at, in the na at the nationwide level, right, in community colleges and universities. Um, it's just, it's all very fascinating and uh, really exciting um, how things are progressing politically in that regard because I think that uh, it was so true, it was so beneficial and it would change so much in terms of the way our students learn um, and how what our faculty would get out of it even. So I, I just, it's one of those trainings you go to where you hope it's gonna be good and it's really good and then you wish that everyone would just be able to go. So um, yes, uh, had a great time there. And uh, you know, big thanks to Alex Guerrero, um, who works here on campus. You know, he he really was. Um, he's always been um, key to planning that institute here on campus. And everyone who comes here from, I don't know. I talk to people from Rhode Island. I talk to people from just everywhere, and uh, they just they had a warm welcome. So that was great. Um, after that, uh, me and uh, nine of my teammates went to. Uh, the Seesaw Leadership Conference, uh, that stands for California Community Colleges Student Affairs Association. Um, they have a leadership conference they do twice a year. Um, in the fall is when we usually go. And uh, you know, again, about nine of us went with our advisor and um, it's always a great time um, to connect with the other student governments from the other community colleges in California and to find out how things are going on their campus. I mean, straight from them, you know, face-to-face -face contact. Um, really, really deep uh, conversations and workout, uh, sorry, um, breakout sessions, uh, workshops. So it's just, um, there's been a lot of um, learning, I think, a lot of um, finding out about how things are changing. So uh, that's something we've done. And then uh, just at the end of October, we uh, collaborated with Classified Senate again this year to host the Halloween event. Um, I wasn't out there this year. I had class, but um, uh, more of my teammates participated in it, and I heard that it was fun. It was uh, a nice little change because, after all, last year we chose not to host the event because it was just after the fires had happened, and we didn't think that it... Yeah, at the time, we just we didn't think that it was right to be having a celebration of a sort. We wanted to have focus more on uh, how to help the community bounce back and, uh, and all that. So, again, it was nice to, uh, to do. Um, so yeah, it's again, it's, I don't know, it's been an unusually busy October. Um, so that's what I'd like to report. Sounds great. Thank you, Raphael. Okay. Uh, Classified Association report, Jan Chart. We heard from her earlier today, but she's not here right now. So we'll move on to Classified Senate report, uh, Martin, and Martin is not here, uh, this evening. Faculty Association report. As always, Christy Iwamoto is here. Good evening, board. Um, not much of a report tonight. Just wanted to report that we had 
our final association, general association meeting of the semester today. Um, we won't be having one during finals week, and so we'll be reconvening in February. Uh, we had our, our first, we tried this day, our first official Red for Ed day, where we wore some type of red. I even brought my little red bandana that I wore during the meeting. That just shows uh, solidarity, yep, solidarity uh, among teachers across the country. And, uh, you know, in speaking of solidarity, we had a raffle for people who wore red. It was very cool. Um, but uh, speaking of solidarity, I mentioned last month when I was here that um, in showing solidarity, our statewide union had canceled our reservations at the Marriott uh, in, in San Jose. I just wanted to mention that that uh, strike still continues. And, uh, you know, we are standing with labor. Um, this touches me specifically because I worked in hotels for a long time before I became a teacher. And I do remember um, when we had a Hilton strike about, um, about 10 years ago, people who were striking were standing up for very much the same reason, the increase in minimum wage. Um, and the Hilton in San Francisco lost their houses, lost their apartments, lost their cars um, because they were standing up for something. And then when they finally did give up and say, okay, we'll come back to work, uh, the Hilton wouldn't allow them to come back. They said, no, we have flown in managers from all over the country. And we want to make an example of you. And I, uh, in seeing last week that uh, when City Hall offered to mediate the strike between the Marriott and the workers, the workers agreed, the Marriott refused. And so when you are making your holiday plans, if you're going anywhere and staying in any hotels uh, over the break, I just was hoping that you would keep that in mind and think about the workers of the Marriott Hotel. Um, we also, a uh, quick note, we got a beautiful thank you card from the Santa Rosa Junior College Faculty Association for the donation that our faculty association made for them uh, last year after the fires. We made a, a $500 donation to them because 50 of their faculty had lost their homes in the fire. Uh, on the one year anniversary, the president sent me a beautiful thank you note and, um, and just wanted to, uh, to note that uh, we're trying to make bridges not just between uh, other unions, uh, other faculty unions, and with labor in general. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, foundation report is, are you, yeah. somebody else Yeah, let, let me just that? address, if wanna, I'll just okay. address agenda item eight, really. Okay. We, we are trying something a little new. I'd love to hear from the constituents table. That was very good. Tonight, our, um, our reports are posted for you. So they're all there, and, and by a unique combination of events, um, the foundation um, representative Ann Branch is out of town, Bob is out, um, um, and the vice presidents have posted as, long, uh, as well as I have. So um, enjoy that reading, and that is that agenda item. All right. That was... Uh Pretty straightforward, huh? It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. We have the um, 9.1 approval of minutes from the special uh, from the special meeting on 10-8. If there are any, yes. I'll move approval. Oh, okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. If we can just Are we just doing it those, by consensus? We can just approve those by consensus. Well, you abstain. Yeah, for it's voting, I abstain. Yes. But for yeah, for voting on it, yeah. All right, nine point two minutes of our regular meeting, ten eleven. If there are no additions, changes, then we will move to approve uh, the minutes of nine point or of ten eleven eighteen minutes approved. All right. Uh, first reading of board policies, and we do have a few that are uh, removed for this evening, as I mentioned at the beginning of the agenda. Uh, they are 3410, 3420, and 3430. So we will um, look at them, and we'll start with BP 4030, 
Are there any questions, suggestions, or any um, thoughts on 4030 before we move forward? So is this one, just generally, I asked a question before the meeting about um, if any of these deviate from the CCLC template, and if it did, if it would indicate that in some way on the, the policy or not. I think this one doesn't have a template, right? Isn't this one no written template. from scratch? This is locally developed. So generally, yeah. we when we bring policies forward to, we'll show the existing current policy. We'll show the um, the policy analyst's recommendation to bring it up to current template, and uh, we'll show any changes that deviate from that. Okay, that was someone. Yeah. So it, in general. It's the template, and if yeah. not, somehow that would be indicated. Yeah. And I'm not talking about this one, and more, more the other ones. Okay. Okay. So we will move that forward then for uh, second reading and approval. And uh, it seems with no changes. And then BP5220 uh, is the only other one we'll be reviewing this evening. Any? This one's pretty straightforward. I, I have yes. a comment and a question. Yes. Um, so if you uh, look at the last line that says, um, as and is in good standing with the district, um, is there, could someone clarify for me um, what does um, good standing refer to? I mean, yeah, I'm not sure that I can. Maybe Oscar, I don't know whether or not. That's yeah. a good, it's a good call, actually. Yeah. Correct. Uh, the, the, the idea here is that the students have been be enrolled and, and I'd be in, in a situation where they've, they've, been, they've been disciplined or they've been, uh, they've been dismissed from enrollment. So basically, is anyone who's enrolled in half a unit or more is, is considered to, to be in good standing. Otherwise, and unless they've, they've committed some sort of issue or a crime. So it's basically someone who's enrolled in at least half a unit. Mm -hmm. So it's not about grades or anything. It's more Correct. behavior. It's just enrollment. Yeah, and uh, uh, thank you, Oscar. Um, my comment was um, this is so, um, I, I feel like it's helpful for the students. I mean, uh, I, I really want to commend, you know, moving this forward because if you look at the population of homeless students, obviously there are homeless students on campus um, and they just uh, get disregarded. And this is a policy that obviously supports them. Um, and I am definitely in favor of this. I, and I, I, once again, this is uh, kudos. Thank you. That was great. Uh, great question and also comment. Thank you very much, Josefa. All right. So it looks like everybody is agree in agreement with moving forward as is. <coughs> All right, 11.1, approval of consent calendar. Are there any changes or any items that anybody wishes to pull at this point? Seeing none, consent calendar approved. This is going rather well, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, on to, tr uh, uh, item number 12, 12.1 curriculum changes. Are there any uh, questions or anything there? Do so move. Okay. Second. All right. Are we electronically voting on this? We, we will. The second was? It was Baldini Iverson. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now we have unanimous approval. Thank you. Great. If I could just add my two cents on that one. This is, uh, I, I've been asked over recent times, how does the board support diversity and um, you know, what do we do to make these things happen? And we just did that. Uh, we just did that. So this curriculum change and uh, this new degree, I think is uh, 
a wonderful step and uh, I really commend the shared governance process and how this all came through the system. Was there, Thank you. Was there a certificate before? Because I feel like there was something before already. Or, Eric? Go ahead. Yeah, this was built off of a, a certificate that we've had here at, at Napa Valley College. We're tremendously proud of this. We are one of the few colleges in the state, let alone the country, that offers uh, specific programs in this curriculum. Um, yeah, we, we, are, we are way ahead of things on this one. But yeah, we've had a certificate in place for eight years. Yeah, about, about eight years now. So this expanded off of that certificate with new courses um, and developed this into a full associate's degree in LGBT education. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm tremendously proud of this coming through. Bravo. Yes. Go ahead, Amanda. And I want to give a special shout out to my colleagues, Faye Smiley, Greg Moralia, and Dean Diana Shabodi. Thank All you. All right. Yay. This is huge. This is great. Wonderful. All right, uh, ratify financial documents. Do I hear a motion? So I move. Second. All right, it's Kawaja and uh, Baker. What's your name? <laughs> Baker. <laughs> I just had a question, and I also emailed this um, earlier today. Any, any discussion? Yeah. Okay. Question. Um, so, and I don't know, Bob Parker's not here, but you might know the question I asked about, because I noticed that we've hired out groundskeeping a couple months in a row. Is, is there a plan to hire another groundskeeper, or is it just like seasonal temporary work that we're just needing right now? Yeah, I think Charles can tell you a little more specifics on the recruiting process, but the answer to that question is yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you good? Okay. All right, did every, are we still waiting, Catherine? Oh, uh, it is open for voting. There we go. Okay, that uh, motion carries unanimous. All right, 12.3 North Bay Employment Connection contract with Napa Valley College. And I believe this is revenue, correct? Yes. 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 Move to approve. Second. Martin said Rios. Thank you. Okay, the motion carries a uh, unanimous vote. Thank you. 12.4, approval of special privileges for non-resident tuition fee waiver. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Baldini Iverson. <laughs> Just missed that one. The motion carries by unanimous vote. Dare I say? It's six. No. Don't say it. Seventeen. Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay. Don't say it. Board reports. So uh, standing committees. How about DAS? Rosada, have no you meeting. met? No meeting. Okay. And uh, Viticulture and Winery Foundation Board of Directors. Baldini? No meeting. We have a meeting scheduled for December 4. Okay. And Legislative Affairs Committee, no meeting. Audit and Finance Committee? So our, our next meeting is Thursday, December 6 at 4 p.m. here in the boardroom, and the auditors will be here presenting their initial report. And I do believe there was a real property management committee meeting, right, Baldini? That is correct. So yes, uh, Thursday, November 1st, and approved the minutes. Uh, we discussed the district and campus master plan. There was some conversation. Housing feasibility study, the uh, uh, staff gave a report on where they're at. 
They've uh, interviewed firms so that sent in proposal for the housing feasibility study and uh, that will be bubbled up in the, to the December board meeting. And uh, Napa Valley wine train update, Dr. Kraft reported that the Napa Valley wine train appears to be close to seeking a memorandum, minim, excuse me, a memorandum of understanding and announcement of future meetings December 10. And just for clarification, there was no uh, uh, agenda or information item on, on uh, job market or job demand or any discussion that would, or decision made to post anything on the website web regarding any discussion that occurred in that meeting uh, that was uh, not discussed. And any other questions? Um, uh, I did make a comment regarding uh, other examples of programs that were public-private relations or public-private partnerships. Uh, I was actually at the time of my visit to the to Johnson County Community College, which has a a, a program. I was actually working for the Union Pacific Railroad at the time. I was not representing Napa College at the time of that, that visit. And uh, we, Union Pacific, was uh, at the time and continues, as far as I know, to operate with Salt Lake City Community College, a rail, a rail program. And uh, it's not being uh, taught, nor are they training for employees of, of the, the railroad, just broadening the the pool of potential applicants for positions that might come available. So as far as uh, the, uh, and this was not discussed, this is just an add-on of, of the 50 largest transit agencies in the United States. Uh, we have uh, seven San Francisco Muni, 10 BART, number 28 is AC Transit, number 45 is Sacramento. If you look at uh, heavy rail systems and growth, uh, and uh, as a personal um, uh, observation, that's, that's all I would add or offer in any of the reports I made at that meeting. It was not a board action of any sort, uh, and, and we are a committee appointed by the, the, the chairman on the Napa Valley College Board of Trustees. So we made no decision regarding any sort of selection, any sort of... Uh, uh, potential uh, uh, offerings either on a vocational or academic uh, level. This was and, and will continue to be purely exploratory um, and uh, whether or not it warrants conversation at the board level. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Baldini. And I know that there's nothing to add on the McPherson committee. <laughs> We know that. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. Re regarding committees, is it possible to postpone any more committee meetings until after election results have been certified and new chair and whether or not committees have changed? Right. If I may add that there's uh, quite a few people involved and in, as example, uh, as you know, the viticulture uh, program and it's been, this isn't our first date. We finally got a date where everybody's meeting and that's December 4th. Uh, so I would, I would make exceptions myself, but it's, it's certainly your, your call, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah. I think that if the committees are scheduled um, already, well, I could you, I could clarify. I mean, so yeah. the, the two foundations are not committees of the board; they're foundations. So they would mm. they would be separate from this, from what you're talking about. And you're right; the the foundation is is scheduled to meet on December fourth. And I don't, and I'm not sure about the uh, district auxiliary services. I think that's going to well, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is met last month. Did yes, you know yes, there I don't think a, there is not one scheduled. On so it, the, that's a differentiation that would, might help you. Not yeah. We have auditors I, coming to ours, so we need to keep our dates. 
is already scheduled yeah, it's with already the scheduled. auditors. Bob sent me an email today about an auditor, so he said he was getting back to me, and I don't know what that means yet, but okay. you know, whether or not they would have a change of date or not, so that may solve itself. And I think that's and every... And until any new trustees are, are actually sworn in, right. they're not official, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. So, After certification yeah. mm -hmm, of the election. So it sounds like everything's already, uh, balls are already in place or moving forward or whatever. All right. Um, anything else? And we'll move on to, on committees. Okay, we'll move on to 13.2, future agenda item request. Are we pulling up the log? Yeah, can you open it? Yeah. No, Do you All right, is there anything, uh, anybody has any comments or questions about here and uh, any new requests that we need to put on the agenda? I have new requests, um, two. Um, well, one is an update on the wine train. I'd, I'd like to put that on the agenda for an information and discussion item. Um, it has been in the paper and um, I guess it does have a name, and we've never had a presentation at the board level. So I just would like to have an opportunity just to kind of hear an update on what the process is, because I don't know, maybe Diana Chabody's department has been consulted. Maybe there is data uh, driving this. So anyway, I just think we need an update on where it's at and what the process has been so far and kind of where it's going so that we can, the whole board can can know what's happening and I be able to weigh in. It's already scheduled for December, so oh, we're, we're, we're set. Okay, so that's one. And then the other, um, somebody from the community forwarded me a, um, I guess like a rule on um, cannabis, including medical cannabis. Um, and it made me realize that probably now with the legalization of cannabis that we may need to update our drug-free environment policy because I know it, it was a rule that was posted but nothing's ever come to the board as far as adding it to any of our board policies. And one of the provisions, for example, was that even medical cannabis um, wasn't allowed. So anyway, I'm just wondering, maybe that's coming from state law or I don't know where that was coming from, but I just feel like we need to talk about it as a board and update our board policy on a drug-free environment and build in cannabis and the legalization of cannabis. That has, been, that has gone to council presidents and we had quite a robust conversation. I'm looking at Amanda because I remember this deep conversation. If I'm not mistaken. I don't think Ken is here. Not here. Yeah. Um, no, Ken had said, though, that the federal law still yes, exactly. ho holds up. And yeah. so I don't think that then will require a change on our local law. That, that was my understanding as well. But we, we're happy. To, it's coming back anyway, so it will be scheduled. So. Well, I know somebody, I know somebody asked for smoking, but it kind of falls outside of that because people aren't smoking it necessarily. So, yeah, I just thought it... We should talk about it. Well, we got the and I don't even know how much room we have to weigh in. Maybe it is guided by law, but even if it's guided by law, I think it should be in our policy and then with the legal citation backing it up. Smoking policy is scheduled, I see, here for December as well, so we could probably uh, tag that in if it's okay with... Uh, Add in the drug-free environment one. Yeah. But yes. Given the discussion and, and from what I've heard, yes, it'd be nice to have an update on the job market in the North Bay as well as um, looking out five years, present five years, 10 years, something like that. Okay. Where the talking about are. cannabis or smoking? Yeah. What are you back to something else? <laughs> but, well, that could be included. Those, those are jobs, you know, off the L. We Especially at your end of the valley, you know, those, those mountain uh, vineyards up there. Um, I would say rather than an agenda, we are working on an educational master plan update. It went to cabinet this week. We're working on a, and part of that will be deep um, kind of labor market updates. So it will come to us. I'm not, I don't think December though, but a little early, but happy to, happy to get that out there. Diane's and, going, not December. No, no, no. She's panicking back there. Um, First quarter. But yes, but we um, we'll, we are working on that for sure. Okay. It will show cannabis as a growth industry. Yeah, yes. 
Yeah. So I've been told. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> Okay, any other uh, agenda item request or questions on the log? All right, we will move on at, uh, <laughs> dare I say it, 627 board reports, trustee reports. Uh, so why don't we start with Mr. Kwaja. Thank you, board chair. Um, I'm gonna start off with the uh, legislative breakfast. Uh, it was, you know, amazing. It was my second time, but first time being a student trustee, uh, getting to meet uh, legislators firsthand, and them getting to know me, and having conversation about students, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, ab about how we can move forward and, you know, we can collaborate on different aspects of uh, helping the students. Uh, next up, we had, uh, obviously I think, uh, Rafael Manzo had cl clarified a uh, CESA conference. It, it's a wonderful step in developing student leaders. And uh, I think there was a lot to learn from the conference. Uh, not only how to navigate your role as either a trustee or a board member in uh, your ASO, but as a general person or a dynamic character. Uh, then we had the 31st of October, uh, we, we had collaboration with the classified for the Halloween event. I think it went good. I mean, I, I, I would have been there, but you know, there's always schedule. Uh, then there was our student success standard committee, uh, um, uh, November 5, it went good. Um, I, I, I really think we're uh, at a point where, uh, there's, there's flow, actual flow into what we're doing and it's kind of making sense, the direction we're going. Uh, then uh, I had, you know, meeting with Dr. Kraft, was productive. Uh, then tomorrow I hope, uh, not only me, but hopefully I'll see you, most of you or some of you tomorrow, tomorrow night for the <coughs> SSS True, sorry I'm under weather, um, SSS True celebration event. So I will not be there as student trustee, but I will be there as a recipient. So um, hopefully see you uh, there. Uh, then there's last bit, uh, the Council of Presidents, 11.13, I will be hoping to attend that. Uh, regardless of my schedule, I will make time for that. Um, and I think that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baldini. Yes, good evening and thank you. Uh, I, too, was at the legislative breakfast, uh, very impressed with the proceedings and, uh, and uh, the setup, the presentations. I was also in uh, Hawaii up on Mauna Kea, 13,796 feet or something like that, and noticed all the uh, telescopes, and many of them sponsored by universities and so on and so forth. I was thinking about Bumpy Camp and our our uh, tr uh, professor emeritus, uh, Dr. Charles, about putting something up there on study the stars or something like that. But anyway, it was just a thought. Mm. And then I was able to attend uh, a rootstock, the Napa Valley grape growers here on campus down in the, uh, in the baseball fields with my colleague, uh, Carla Iverson, and uh, conversations about um, uh, all the, uh, the, well, one, the connection, and, and two, it came up about uh, what are the needs are, I asked the question, and the sophistication today of, of farm equipment, particularly the, the uh, power plants, whether they're diesel, propane power, or biodiesel, et cetera, et cetera, it takes uh, more than somebody that's just uh, um, Homegrown, if you will, it, it, uh, so there might be an opportunity there, but I can't wait to hear from from our own team on, on in the first quarter about potential for jobs, but definitely a need for for uh, uh, mechanics and technicians, and that's where it's evolved to. I've also been appointed to the board chair of the Napa Valley Transportation Authority Citizens Advisory Committee, and we heard from our operator, uh, Cheryl Drake, and 
uh, TransDev, the, comp the underlying company that operates the Napa County line system, they operate uh, rail transit as well as fixed guideway systems throughout the United States and Canada, one of the largest in the, in the country. And their need is for drivers and also uh, mechanics and so on and so forth. So uh, we heard a report from, from them, so I'll just leave it at that. But uh, I think that uh, covers it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Baker. Well, um, I unfortunately missed the legislative breakfast. I was planning to go, even though I'm not a morning person. Um, but unfortunately, I was in day five of the cold from hell that actually lasted a good two and a half weeks. So unfortunately, I had to miss that. But I did get to go to uh, the culinary school graduation last week, and it was lovely. I got to bring my mother-in-law, who was visiting from Texas. And so we had a really nice drive up Valley and a really fantastic lunch and a great uh, experience. So uh, I've been uh, going to the leadership classes and enjoying those. Uh, I won't be able to go to SSS Trio, but congratulations. I'm going to be headed out to Santa Clara tomorrow for California Library Association Conference and uh, my final visit as a board member on that uh, or for that organization. And, but I did just find out that I was selected to participate in something they're calling the Leadership Challenge. Uh, and there are 20 librarians from across the state that have been invited to participate to kind of um, come up with new practical methods for addressing some of the kind of global issues or statewide issues. And uh, I have been selected to represent school libraries and also hopefully community college libraries. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Trustee Martinson. I've been a little busy lately, so I don't have a report tonight. Trustee Rios. Me too. No report. Trustee Segura. Uh, le legislative breakfast. Good presentation, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you. And also attended the culinary school graduation. Very, very nice. Um, and um, I attended, it, it's good to see that the Upper Valley Campus is getting some, some use uh, from community groups and so on and so forth. Uh, it's good to see it busy. I was able to attend uh, the mayoral, mayoral and the St. Lena government um, forum. So three council members and the two uh, mayor candidates made very good use of our campus. So. That's all I have. Oh, and I will be there to see Jose if I be a recipient of tomorrow. Trustee Iverson. I uh, attended the legislative breakfast. I was impressed with that. It was well attended. The culinary graduation, that was it's always awesome to, to see the students and hear the stories. It's a small group, but really good food and just a really good class. Uh, I also attended Rootstock with Trustee Baldini, and I'm humbled to be coming back here after a good election, and that's my report. Thank you. I also attended the legislative breakfast and welcomed everybody and had a little speech, and it was a great, well-attended event and heard nothing but great things from everybody that I spoke to in attendance. Um, also attended the St. Helena Cooking School graduation, which was uh, a wonderful graduation. Barbara, Chef Barbara was there, uh, came back to us because this was her class. So that was, uh, that was nice to see her there and um, again, you know, working with her students from the heart as she always does, and uh, it was a great class. And um, I also attended, and I'm curious about something, maybe Oscar knows, um, an event with Rosada for the Community Health Initiative, uh, Chai, the mm -hmm. vineyard event that you contributed to, and I was just wondering if, um, do we partner with them for and refer people to them for health? Yes, we do. In fact, we, we've uh, we've had a uh, really good partnership with them for, for the last two and a half years. 
They've actually they've they've been on campus and they've uh, made presentations to to our students and staff. So we have partnership with them. Yes, Great. for about two and a half years now. Great organization, and I just want to say um, congratulations to you for contributing to that organization. That's wonderful, and how can you go wrong with health, and children, and in general? So yeah, it um, was a good, it was a good spot to have a, a a lunch or a dinner. It was nice. It was very nice. Um, and then the only other thing is that I um, uh, talked with uh, the NVTA people, some of the people that were at the various events that have been around the county giving presentations, and um, they want to come and talk to us about progress on things that they're doing for students. Yes, they were there, what, the 24th, I believe, or the 28th here? on campus with uh, H, uh, the associated students. Mm -hmm. And I asked them that they'd come back mm -hmm. uh, uh, to reinforce the, the awesome. changes into the, the bus schedules. Okay, that are happening cool. Okay, great. That's all I have. Anything else? Sure. Uh, yeah. Anything else before we adjourn? I am. Um, Yes, I am. I would like to just commend you on your work as chair. And it's been a challenging year, and it's taken a steady and practiced hand to keep us moving forward. And the challenges under your leadership, Marianne, have made a, you've made a really strong impact on the district and the college. And I just wanted to go on the record for commending you on your strong leadership and what you've done for the college. Thank you, Carla. I appreciate that. Yes. All right. So, um, uh, so what I'd like to do is adjourn the meeting this evening uh, with all of us keeping in mind uh, the people who were uh, recently killed in this bar that was sh this bar shooting, but uh, most definitely the young student from Napa who graduated from Finnish High just this year, and uh, Elena Housley. So uh, with that in mind, if we would, in their honor, adjourn the meeting. <laughs>